I think one of the keys to interviewing is that you really have to be present. You have to be a, a good listener and a conversationalist. And I think in that interview, I was really in my head. I was really thinking like, is this a good question? What should I say next? Is this too detailed? Is this not too detailed? Like I was too analytical rather than just being present. Things have turned upside down in this episode of the Experience Podcast. I'm Elizabeth Pearson Gar, usually the host of this podcast. But this time, my friend and coworker Heather took control of the mic and did the interviewing. For once, I wasn't asking the questions, I had to answer them. So buckle up, it's a bit of a bumpy ride, with a lot of laughter along the way. This is Heather. That's right. This is not Elizabeth Harrison Gar. Do not try to adjust your podcast listening devices. Today, <laughs> I am here to flip the script on our host. Today, I'm going to ask her some interview questions so we can delve a little deeper into who she is and why the Experience Podcast and, you know, other things like food, because food is delicious. <laughs> Let's go. Hi, Heather. Thanks. Hi. <laughs> I'm so excited to do this with you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you doing this. So I got the privilege of meeting you in uh, November of last year. And the longer I get to know you, the more amazed I am at all of the experiences you've had in your life. Oh, okay. You're usually behind the scenes talking to people about what they've experienced in their lives. And seriously, every time you mention something and you're like, oh, yeah, well, and then you tell me this amazing experience, like you just pulled out a picture of you and Julia Child. And I just went, <laughs> what? What? <laughs> So I love the idea that we get to learn more about you. Well, thank you also for all that you, I just want to point out, Heather is working with me. She's my social media marketing guru. And so you've done a ton for me. I've loved working with you. you. And same to you. So I guess we can start off. I feel like the best question you ask an interviewer is, what has been your favorite interview ever? And then on the podcast. So I just want to know, because you've been surrounded by so many amazing people in your life. Yeah. I mean, I hate to be super boring. People use this all the time. Like, oh, I don't have a favorite. They're like my child. You can't <laughs> choose one. But sometimes you can. But right? I guess sometimes <laughs> you can. I did get to interview my sister once, which was really cool. Oh, when I was well. making documentary films in film school, I once did a personal film. At the time, I was still single and worried that, oh my gosh, I feel really behind the times. My sister and I are really mm -hmm. close. And she was pregnant with her third baby. And I wasn't even married. And I just felt like we weren't going to have kids together and all this. So I made this personal oh. story about where I was in my life. So I got to interview my sister. And I remember she said this really funny thing. I think you see motherhood through rose colored glasses. <laughs> I remember that. But that was a really special interview. Another, it wasn't an official interview for a story, but again, not to drop names, but it totally stands out in my life was I got to drop all the names to meet Diane Sawyer. Wow! I lived in New York and I just wrote her a letter randomly because I admired her so much. And I thought I wanted to be like her. And the lovely lady wrote me back. Actually, she had That's her assistant amazing. call me and said, Diane would like to meet with you. And so I got to have sort of an interview with her, a meeting with her. And I got to ask her a bunch of questions about what I should do with my career. And she was, that is amazing. She was the most, that is amazing. she was the kindest woman and so encouraging and lovely to me. Wow. So I would say that really sticks out on this podcast. You know, it's really hard to say Ethan Hershenfeld was the first interview that I did. And so that was really yeah. great. He made me laugh so hard. Wow. That was definitely memorable. Um, Amanda doctor, who I interviewed about going to the Academy Awards was really fun because I had never met her, but I felt like immediately she was just so warm and started telling these amazing stories. Yes. She had so many great stories that you wanted to hear. Like I, I was glued to it. I loved it. Yeah. And I felt like we were kind of really good friends right from the start and mm -hmm. I had never met her. And so that was really fun. And um, Jessica Galbraith, who I interviewed recently actually is one of my closest friends. Oh, yeah. She is the mom of mm -hmm. eight kids. That was really fun. Yeah. I mean, they all stand out for different reasons. I really enjoy doing all of them, whether I met them or not, because I'm just really curious about people's lives. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever had one go sideways? Like something unexpected happens or they go off and they start on a tangent about something that has nothing to do with anything? Um, not the interviewee. I think I have done that. 
<laughs> um, <laughs> I, but I'm terrified of doing that myself. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, on, on this podcast season, I interviewed a documentary filmmaker named Dan Sturman, and he's mm-hmm. this incredibly accomplished guy. And I actually have a history in documentary film. I have a master's degree in it. And so I think I've analyzed it afterwards. I think what happened is I think I was a little intimidated and I also was a little overprepared maybe because I think I kind of wanted to impress him or something. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like I did a really bad job in the interview. Like I wasn't totally present. I just remember finishing that and thinking, wow, that went really sideways. And then I listened to it. And fortunately, the interview was long enough that I could edit it and try to make sense of it. But I felt like it got way too in the weeds when we were there. And I think one of the keys to interviewing is that you really have to be present. You have to be a a good listener Mm -hmm. and a conversationalist. And I think in that interview, I was really in my head. I was really thinking like, is this a good question? What should I say next? Is this too detailed? Is this not too detailed? Like I was too analytical rather than just being present. So. I went sideways, but I can't think of an interviewee that has. So in all of your interviewing years, you never had someone go off and say, that's a great question. But instead, I'd rather talk to you about gas prices. Oh, or like I'd rather talk to you about <laughs> a politician. the weather. Oh, yeah. I've had plenty oh, of yeah, those. That too. Yeah. When I worked in oh, local yeah. news, I had to do a lot of stories that maybe weren't my most interesting. They weren't necessarily stories I wanted to do. You know, I would just get assigned mm-hmm. to whatever. And oftentimes, yeah. I would say politicians that's kind of their MO a little bit. Like they'll answer the question they want to answer, not necessarily the question you ask. They're like, great question. Uh, Instead, is there a baby for me to get? Or can I uh, pass? Is this a good photo op for me? (laughs) (laughs) Have you had anyone surprise you during the podcast or any interview moment that happened? I would say the most was with Yusuf Azar. He was the the guy who was in the Muslim cult. And- I knew some of his story because we had talked beforehand. I mean, I talked to all of the interviewees ahead of time and I do research on them. He had sent me some information, some interviews he had done. So I knew a lot of his story, but I didn't know all of it until the interview. Mm -hmm. So we were in the interview and it was a very, very detailed story. I guess not to ruin it for people who haven't listened to it, but there's some pretty dramatic things that he reveals about his daughter. And it was kind of heartbreaking and shocking for me to hear that and to kind of hear it live, what he's gone through with his family. And so that was definitely surprising. And I thought what I knew was sort of a deep traumatic enough story. And then he threw these other elements in and I was like, wow. (laughs) And he was still ready and willing to do this interview because he really wanted to share that story to help other people. And that's sometimes people's motivation to want to do these interviews is if they've gone through something hard, they want to share it. So other people either can relate and feel better or don't go through the same experience themselves. So that that's been Yusuf's motivation. So yeah, that was, that was surprising for me. And since then I've got to meet him and Oh, yes. I saw the picture. Yeah. I loved it. And and yes. his daughter. And it was really lovely and kind of heartwarming. So I feel like I have a oh. new friend. <laughs> if anyone's wondering where this picture is, check out our social media pages, both on Facebook and Instagram. You can see these live updates. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I love that interview as well. And uh, thanks. Also, I love the last week's podcast, actually which was kind of about you as well, being one of the first employees of the Food Network. First of all, I love the Food Network, (laughs) mostly because I, as a mom with littles, I can put the Food Network on and I can watch a part of it and disappear. And guess what? At the end of it, a cake's going to be made or a (laughs) meal's going to be made. In the end, I'm not going to need all the details in the middle. Something's still going to happen in the, and I'm going to see amazing food at the end. So it's, Perfect channel for that I can watch without worrying about missing a beat in between. Um, and you don't have to clean anything amazing. up. Oh, especially <laughs> that. All the food and none of the dishes. That should be the tagline. Yeah, it should. But while listening to it, one thing I wanted to say is I loved that you, again, with the letters. So you wrote a letter to Diane Sawyer and you're able to meet with her and interview her. And to get this job, you wrote a letter 
and said that you were going to be in New York, which you weren't, <laughs> but you said you were going to be in New York just to interview for a position and you had to get in a position of being one of the very first people of the Food Network. First of all, you were like one of the first people to slide into DMs, but using, <laughs> <laughs> using snail mail. <laughs> I sometimes think it's funny when you go back and look at stuff you've done in your younger years, you kind of should look at yourself and say like, wow, look at me. Like I, I was pretty bold, you know, like maybe you should take <laughs> little elements of your previous self and incorporate them into your current self and say like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I could be bold again. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> that's kind of the only reason I started the podcast. Like I can do these things again. I love it. But what I found out is that you love cookbooks. You've got a secret love for cookbooks. Yes. I have one cookbook in this house and it's Disney Princess Cookbook. Oh, it, it must be delicious. <laughs> I can teach you how to make a Rapunzel braid, a bread. Oh, thing, that's good. An aerial sea foam smoothie or maybe a magical wand made of uh, cookies. <laughs> but otherwise, I'm not the biggest cook. So as someone who should be a better cook, what would you suggest for cookbooks? What's your favorite? What's a staple? What's your suggestions? Let's see. I, it's very like traditional and old school, but I think everyone should have the joy of cooking. It's, sure. it's been revised several times, but it has all the basics, but they're really good and solid recipes. And mine has many stains on it and you can get everything. I mean, you can get, you know, a good roast chicken or pancakes recipe, but really good stuff too. So I'd say you need like a basic cookbook and then you can get like the fancier, more, you know, vegetarian, floofy, whatever, separate <laughs> cookbooks on the side, but you need a good basic. And I think Joy of Cooking is it. So first I can start off with my Disney Princess cookbook and the next step is Joy of yeah, Cooking. Yeah, Disney. Well, I mean, I should have mentioned that Disney Princess is everyone's first on their wedding <laughs> registry. And after yes. that. <laughs> the Joy of Cooking. I love it. And then others I have... I've had several favorites over time. I mentioned in that episode that I got to produce this thing called Cookbook Corner, which was every week oh, yeah. a different cookbook author would come in. And it was just really fun because sometimes someone I knew about, sometimes someone I didn't know about would come in. Oftentimes I got to keep their cookbook. And so sometimes those became my favorite for a while. So I went through rotating favorites. For a long time, I loved this book called um, Beard on Bread, which was James Beard, who's a very famous cook. In fact, the James Beard Awards are kind of like the Oscars of the food world. And if you like baking bread, that's a really great book to get, Beard on Bread. Next, I was going to ask you, because I feel like you are kind of a foodie, right? Would you consider yourself a foodie? I mean, yeah, I think I'm more used to be, you know, when I was single, I used to think, oh, I can't wait till I have a family because oh, there'll be so many people I get to cook for all the time. And now that I've had a family for a while, I'm like, oh, I have to make dinner again every night. You know, now that it's a little bit more of a chore, it's yeah. not really as, if I have the time to really think about it and shop for and make something really mm -hmm. fun, I love it, but I don't really have that as much. So it's the daily grind isn't as much fun. Yeah. Is there a like favorite type of food to make a favorite type of food that your family eats or? We eat a wide variety. Um, my kids are really good eaters, I think partly because I yeah. gave them a lot of different kinds of food growing up and I just like good food. The pickiest person in my family is my husband. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> my kids eat every type of fish. They both love seafood and just, and my husband, he's like, mm. Yeah. My kids will say, why isn't daddy eating the Brussels sprouts? Why doesn't daddy eat the cauliflower? Well, mm -hmm. you know, he's just a little pickier. So, um. <laughs> Yeah, we eat a, a wide variety of stuff. My favorite food, personally, is blueberries. I just love blueberries. Oh. I eat them every and day. you don't have to cook blueberries. <laughs> no, I don't have to cook them. <laughs> and it's just kind of a joke. Yeah. They'll be like, there's mommy and her blueberries. I just love them. Oh. And I love making soups in the winter. And my younger daughter loves soups, too. My older daughter sometimes gets a little bit like soup again. But I just feel like it's just a really nice, hearty, full of vegetables, one-dish meal. Yeah. Love it. With some mm -hmm. good bread big salads in the summer. We have a little vegetable garden on the side. We live in California. We have fruit trees in the back. So I love baking. Do you have an avocado tree? We do not have an avocado tree. I wish we did, but we eat a lot of avocados, a lot of avocado toast. Yeah. yeah. Just had to check. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I had to throw my branding in there real fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. You're um, the avocado mama. I am avocado mama. Yes, exactly. So 
more into the details of your podcast. So why the experience? Why the podcast? When did it all begin? When did the idea of it become? I've been kind of floating around the idea of a podcast for a little while. I, I took quite a bit of time off from paid work. I won't say work because I think every parent works, oh, but yes. I was home with my kids for a while doing a ton of volunteer work with the schools and the community. And I was loving that for a while. And then it kind of started to change. Like I felt like I was not loving it. It was more just that stuff was being asked of me. And I kind of was getting this little burning inside. Like I want to get back to the stuff that I really want to do. And my background is like journalism and filmmaking and stuff. And I thought, well, I live in San Francisco Bay area and I'm not going to move to like LA or New York to go into film or TV. (laughs) I have a family living here. So what could I do here? And podcasting is just something that would use a lot of my skills and interests, not the visual part of my background, but a lot of, you know, the interviewing, the storytelling. I love editing, like all of that stuff I could do, but I, I knew I had to learn a lot also. And so I took a course actually through Stanford Continuing Studies. It was online because of the pandemic and it was great. I learned a lot and um, got me really kind of fired up. Okay, I'm finally going to do this. I talked about doing it for a while and then the pandemic hit. We ended up doing like a backyard pod school for our kids. So I was kind of a school administrator for a while. And I thought, it's finally time. It's finally time. I'm going to do this thing that I've been wanting to do. So I decided on the experience because there's kind of like a common notion, I guess, in podcasting, like be very niche. You know, you need kind of a specific audience, like you can't just have a food podcast. You need to have it be mangoes or you can't just have a parenting, but have it be, you know, single moms or, you know, something like have it be super specific. So you have your audience. And I thought, I don't know that there's one thing that I'm so passionate about. Like Mm -hmm. I like mangoes, but I don't want to do a whole podcast for years on mangoes. I'm getting a little sick of mangoes. So I have a really wide variety of interests and my husband kept saying, well, what is it that you really like? He's like, you love behind the scenes. Like you're always asking, you know, like we'll watch a show on Netflix. And I'm always like, who came up with that? Like, or was that based on a book or did they shoot that in London? Or was that really in British Columbia? Or how did they cast that? And, you know, I'm always wanting like the behind the scenes stuff. So finally I was like, I should just kind of do some sort of behind the scenes. Like, what is it really like to, and I thought, that's kind of my niche. My niche is like the experience of a wide variety of experiences. So that's how I came up with that. I love it. It is so much fun. Thank you. So how do you find these guests? The one that blew me away was the composer from Tangled. I'm like, this man, he worked with Alan Menken from The Little Mermaid. I named my daughter Ariel. Like this, (laughs) how does she know these people? How do you find these guests? Well, are you writing letters? I am writing some letters. Yes. I mean, that comes from my journalism background. Sometimes you just have to do cold calls and just say, you can say no, but I'm just trying. Mm -hmm. So some people are friends or friends of friends. Some are just cold calls and some have just come to me like Karen Peterson, the woman who spoke about being in recovery from being an alcoholic. She -hmm. had actually heard the podcast. Turns out she's a high school friend of Amanda Doctor. So she had heard the podcast. And she wrote to me and said, have you considered doing an episode on alcoholism treatment and recovery? And so, and so I'm always open. If anyone out there listening has any great ideas, I feel like everybody has a great story. In fact, when I worked in local news, one of my favorite assignments was we were all given these areas to go out to. Each of us had this huge area. The task was go find a story, just go. And in a few days, find an interesting story from this part of our viewing area. And I loved that yeah. because I felt like that sounds like so much fun. It was so much better than going and like covering the car crash or the local uh-huh. city council or something like that. So that's kind of always been my philosophy is everyone has an interesting story. However, not every interesting story totally fits for my podcast because mm-hmm. my niche is a little bit more like an experience that's interesting and unique that not all of us have experienced. But that said, I love to hear about people's ideas and no idea is a bad idea. Not everyone is totally fit for this podcast, but I love hearing new ideas. I love it. You're doing a great job finding people because you're keeping it interesting and I'm loving it. And thank you. (laughs) 
I'm supposed to listen to it just for the fact yes. that I work for you, but <laughs> you have a listener for life no matter what. Oh, thank you. Okay. So lastly, I want to ask you, you've mentioned behind the scenes and how you love behind the scenes. I also love behind the scenes. <laughs> Can you tell us anything that's happened while making podcasts? Let's see. I know conventional wisdom is a lot of podcasters podcast in their pajamas. I do not podcast <laughs> in my pajamas. I feel like I need to get dressed every day <laughs> to be like a real person. Yeah. I do podcast in my slippers. However, I'm wearing my slippers all the time. <laughs> um, I always have my dog by my side. He is my Aww. loyal companion and he is with me always. And he's very, very quiet. So he does not disturb the podcasts except once. And it was oh. really terrible timing because I was interviewing John Malone. And as you may recall, he is oh, the voice actor. Yeah. And so yes. he was literally just talking about, he was in his professional sound booth as we were talking. So he sounded perfect with all his high tech uh -huh. professional equipment. And I am in my non high tech <laughs> situation. <laughs> and he was talking about what you need, be in a place where you don't have airplanes flying over or kids yelling or dogs barking. And not 30 seconds later, my dog starts barking. <laughs> And I was like, on cue, there I am, not a professional. <laughs> he said, sorry about that, John. Got to let the dog out. But he's very, my dog's very loyal to me. He just likes to be where I am. But the best thing would be to um, obviously have a booth or to just be in a very quiet, padded space. So a lot of podcasters go in a closet, like a walk-in closet. <laughs> I sometimes record. That's where I should be, <laughs> in a closet. Because I have children, dogs airplanes, all of it. <laughs> I can have something flying over my head any second with three small children. <laughs> Paper airplane <laughs> with a child. <laughs> oh yes, easily. I sometimes go in one of my daughter's rooms because I feel like there's more stuffed animals and pillows. Like it's just a more padded mm -hmm. environment. So I do sometimes laugh at myself. Like here I am putting out this podcast, sitting on the floor of this pink room with stuffed animals all around me. <laughs> <laughs> I have a daughter with a pink room as well. <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of my my behind the scenes. So yeah, do you have any tips for anyone that's starting a podcast or wanting to start a podcast? I think taking that course was really helpful for me. If you have a sort of extension course at a community college or university near you, or many of them are just online now, yeah. or if, aside from that, just reading a bunch, there's a lot of great books out there. Maybe I'll even put some in the show notes to this, some of the books that I read, I or there's good articles online. I think the more that you know before you dive in, the better, because mm -hmm. it's been a lot more than I thought it would be. I thought that mm -hmm. I was prepared professionally. I knew quite a bit. I knew that I didn't know a lot. There was even more that I didn't know. <laughs> and time- I feel like that's summing up parenthood for me. <laughs> parenthood and I, maybe life. I read some books. I thought I knew it all. <laughs> Turns out, no. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's just a good philosophy to live by, right? Yeah, yeah just be flexible. Just life. Yeah. And some of it is just my own doing. You know, I set up this weekly schedule. I want to put them out every week. And so that's a bit more of a grind than if you just want to put it out every few weeks. But I think know as much as you can before you start publishing. On the other hand, I did get this bit of advice. I launched in October. And around August or September, somebody told me, You'll never learn as much in pre-production as you will after you've actually launched. Basically, you need to get out there, start doing it, and that's when the real learning begins. So yeah, don't, kind of on the go. Yeah, don't spend so much time ruminating and trying to plan and getting everything going. Like, Just get out there and realize it's never going to be perfect and mm -hmm. pivot as you need to and that sort of thing. So it's super fun to do. I, I just love doing the interviews and meeting all these people really interesting people and researching them and everything, but it also is a lot of work. So I think I thought it would be a little more like a part-time gig or something, and it's not. <laughs> so I just think people should be aware of what you're getting into, but I really love it. And I feel fortunate that I get to do it. Yes. And we appreciate you doing it. Thank you. And thank you for helping me <laughs> spread the word out in the world, because okay. if I just did it, and nobody was listening, then it's kind of like a tree falling in the forest. So I'm hoping that more people can listen because the new episodes come out every Wednesday. That's when we release them. What podcast do you listen to? These days I've been listening to, well, I love Smartless because it makes me laugh. And mm. I listen to Armchair Expert 
Dax Shepard has a really easygoing conversational way about him that I like. And then Kelly Corrigan Wonders. I like her style of asking questions and her guest star is really interesting to me. And then I'll go in and kind of listen to some of the new and noteworthy. So I'll dip into a lot of other podcasts, but those are just three that come to my mind recently. There's always that one question people always ask, you know, dead or alive, who's the one person that you would interview? Oh, dead or alive. There's so many people. I feel like the goal that I have is it would just be really great to get to interview some real newsmakers, people who are thought leaders. I mean, I love the people that I'm interviewing. I don't think you have to be a bold face name. name to be interesting, yeah. but I think it would be neat to get to mix that in, like people who are involved in some of these major decisions going on in the world, along with the people that I'm getting to talk to. That would be cool. Yeah, that's awesome. I can't wait for everyone to get on board and listen as well. I don't know what's going to happen anymore. So I didn't know what to expect being the interviewee, but it was actually really fun answering Heather's questions, as you could probably tell. Usually at this point in the podcast, I do takeaways from my conversation with my guests. Can I really do takeaways from myself? I guess I'll give it a try. Here's an easy one. Work with people who make you laugh. Two, going out on a limb, writing letters to people I didn't even know, has often paid off for me. Three, a key to a good interview or just a good conversation is to stay present. If you're too much in your head, analyzing yourself, the whole thing can go off the rails. Four, realize that while there's a lot we may know, there's a lot more we probably don't know. And that's okay. It's good to be challenged. Five, everybody really does have a good story. And finally, number six, a loyal, quiet dog makes a great co-producer. My thanks to Heather Stenwall for doling out the questions for this episode and for spearheading the marketing and social media efforts for the Experience Podcast. You can find out how to follow us by going to our website, theexperiencepodcast.net. You can also sign up for our newsletter there. If you're enjoying this podcast, I'd really appreciate it if you'd rate, review, and subscribe, and tell some friends about it. I'm Elizabeth Pearson Garb. Thanks for joining the experience. <laughs>